Hello and welcome back to The Notes. It's been a quiet day today. Little movement in any of the significant markets as people don't want to take a position ahead of Thursday's very important meeting of the ECB. However, we have had a very significant landmark. We've now had seven fat years. It's the seventh anniversary of the bottom for the US stock market following the Lehman crash back in March 2009. As you can see from this first chart, it has indeed been a fantastic seven years for the US stock market. We're showing you here the S&P 500 relative both to bonds through the aggregate and to gold. And you can see that in both cases, the outperformance has been quite remarkable. Also note that that outperformance has tapered off quite significantly over the last year or so. Now, if we take a look at this next chart, you can see that it really is a story of US dominance. That doesn't at first sight make a lot of sense. S&P companies get a very large chunk of their earnings and revenues from outside the US. Globalization is the order of the day. But the US has dramatically outperformed the rest of the world and particularly Europe over the last seven years. Uh, you have plainly to ask yourself how long that can continue. As you can see from that green line there for the rest of the world outside of the US, they really are now in plainly in a bear market. You have to wonder whether uh, the US, in fact, is by now also in a bear market. Now, if we take a look at how commodities have done in this next chart, you can see the very strange picture you would normally expect after years of expansion, years of strength for stocks, uh, to have some kind of an inflationary situation underway. But gold, as you can see, the, the, the price is uh, very much under control, not the kind of uh, great angst over inflation that you might expect. Meanwhile, oil is actually cheaper now than it was at the bottom in 2009. That's primarily about supply rather than demand. It's still quite a remarkable picture. Now that helps to explain, if we take a look at this next chart, why there's been such a variety uh, of different performances by the main sectors of the market here. Consumer discretionary companies uh, benefiting from uh, higher consumption have been doing fantastically. I suspect more from consumers outside the US than in. We know from the political campaign at the moment that a lot of people feel very unhappy about the economy, judging by their spending patterns, judging by the way investors are treating uh, discretionary consumer stocks, they are still doing very well. The energy sector, obviously, thanks to the oil price, has not done anything like as well. Now, finally, if you want one rather worrying tell that the, uh, the uh, bull market might be coming into an end, what we're looking at here is the uh, performance of the Russell 2000 index, that's the index of smaller companies here in the US, compared to uh, the Russell Top 50, the, the very mega caps, and the Russell 1000, which is an index of larger caps. Uh, generally, when, smaller, when the market is going up, the smaller companies tend to outperform the large. And now, as you can see, we have a pronounced pattern of underperformance by small caps, which goes back some two years now. Again, this is a very strange uh, during a bull market. It implies that this bull market may not have much longer to go. In fact, it may indeed, we, we may be able to say in hindsight, it may indeed already be over. But it has been a great seven years for those who happen to be holding US stocks.